return with, which is Psalm 20. And after our scripture reading, we will be led in prayer by Minister Wheeler. Praise God. Psalm 20.
and infirmities in our bodies, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Let us know that you are a healer. You are a healer of all our sicknesses and diseases and infirmities. You are a miracle working, God. Let us know, Father, if there be any minds that's wandering this morning.
because we got some mighty word that's coming this evening through the men and women of God that God has placed here at this place. And I thank God for them being willing to come back. We want to invite everybody back and some that might be on Facebook and some that you might know to come and help us to bring in the new year this, this evening at 1030. We just want to, we want the Lord to just have his way. I know that the Lord has been speaking to the men and women of God. Uh, but we're we're not even worried about trying to transition or move into 2024. We, we want to live every day. Yeah. Too many times we want, to, we want to have rhymes and we want to make all of these things that we're going to do for 2024. Yeah. But let's just, let's just take it one day at a time and let God lead us and guide us. Because as we said before, we got a plan, but God plan trumps out every time. Yes, sir. And I don't, I don't want to make no I don't want to make no plans without God being in the middle no. of it. Right. Amen. Amen. Because he laughs when we when we start making our plans of what we gonna do without him to him. Amen. But I truly thank God for you this this morning. Joshua chapter number five. We do honor the spirit of the Lord. I want to thank God for these uh, mighty women of God who have carried out on the pulpit uh, and with devotion and through the praise and worship and to preside. We thank God for them. We acknowledge all the ministers, preachers, pastors, uh, evangelists. We thank God for our elders. We thank God for each one of you uh, in your respective places. We thank God for this praise team. Our musicians, we have ushered in the very spirit of God and we thank them. Yeah. I, I, I like it when we have a, a situation where we're looking for a little bit of room in the choir stand. That's a good thing. Amen. Yeah. We, so we thank God for uh, our praise team and, and the willingness to yeah. come and to usher in the presence of God. But I want to thank God that they took the time to rehearse and, and then to present it to God because we don't want to give God anything that we don't do our best. In. Amen. 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 So I thank God. That, that what we do, we want to do it with excellence. Amen. Especially when it comes to God because he did some excellent things for us. Yes. When, when he gave his only begotten son, that was Not excellent. Amen. Amen. And so I thank God for you today. Amen. I want to thank God for our wonderful ushers who have served so well at the door today. And I want to thank God for each one of you. Y'all do know that it's one, two, three, one, two, three today, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. One, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, it won't happen again for them. Uh, oh, one, two, three, one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Each of the 12, 31st, 2020. Yeah. 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 And the Lord has kept us. Yes, yeah. And so that's yes. something to worship God about. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter 5, verse 11 and verse 12. Chapter Joshua chapter 5 verses 11 and 12. One more time. Joshua 5 verse 11 and 12. Matter of fact, I'm going to read 10 also to make it all make sense. And the children of Israel encamped by Gilgal and kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month at evening in the plain of Jericho. And they did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow after the Passover, unleavened cakes and parched corn in the self same day. And the manna stopped or ceased on the morrow after they had eaten the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna anymore. But they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to thank God again for each person being here today. And I want to use for a, a subject for just a moment. Transition. Right. Transition. Brothers and sisters, as we were prepared to preach today, the Lord in my office while I was just sitting in there, he began to tell me, he said that in this year that's coming up, there's going to be some major transitions yes, for this ministry oh and for the people in this church. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me say that one more time. He said that there will be some major yeah. 
transition this year for this ministry and for individuals in this house. Let me tell you what a transition is. It's a process or a period of changing from one state to another. Where God is going to take you from here to there. You're going to be here one minute and then the next day you look up, you're going to be moved somewhere else. You're going to start out in, in weeping. But he said, as fast as his tears were dropping, he said, I'm going to change it to joy. <laughs> Not only that, but he said that, that those broke days are changing <laughs> to the point where you're going to be a blessing to somebody else because it starts in your heart. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thank you, God. Because, because transition is what God is into. God is ever changing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he stays the same. Oh, yeah. 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 He, don't change his, he don't change his mind on things. No, right. no. But he changes us in the middle of it. Yeah, right. Right. This is the second thing. I ain't got too much. But the second thing is, is that he said that your integrity right. is going to take you places that your money couldn't get you there? Yeah. <laughs> Integrity is doing the right thing when nobody's watching. Somebody need to hear me on this because, because God said that what I need you to understand is, is that, that you got to do the right thing even when everybody else is going there. Let me say that again. Integrity yeah. is doing what's right when nobody's watching. Oh my God. Because God has been saying, and I ain't talking about this church, but he's been saying there's been a lot of people who've been saying a lot of things, a lot of religious things, but their life don't match up. But what they've been saying God said, I need you to talk less and do more. Y'all right. well, ain't gonna talk to me. See, I, I, didn't, I didn't come just to just to give you one, two, three points and then we'll sit down. But what I'm trying to tell you, if you would believe the preacher, your integrity means more to God than any amount of money you can put on the table. Yeah. Your integrity to God means more than your hands lifted up. All right. <laughs> because you can praise a lot just as well as you can tell. <laughs> My mouth filled with praise. <laughs> but you can't be trusted. And God is looking for a people. Yeah. It don't have to be everybody, but he's looking for a people uh -huh. who is really sold out in this season. Uh -huh. In this season of transition, in this time yeah. of moving forward, in this time uh, of laying aside some stuff and moving in the things that God wants you to, to move in. In this time of change, it has all to do with the way you walk. And I'm not saying be perfect because, because as long as we live in this body, we're going to have some struggles. Yes. 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 But we got to be willing All right. Jesus. that when we find ourselves at a place where we're not walking right, we got to be willing to, to repent. Yes. Amen. 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 After 
repentance, that means to turn away from and go another direction. That's what that's why integrity is important because, because just because you didn't get caught don't mean that God don't know. And he's looking for somebody that he can trust. That he can put some stuff in their head and know that they're going to take care of it. They're going to make sure that they, they, they're walking in, in such an integrity that even when nobody else show up, they're going to show up. I saw that this morning. Nothing goes unnoticed by God. Amen. And when you do it for him, and when you do it ah. well, because he asked you to do it, that he's going to bless you, that, that there's nothing that I can do, but God can bless you better than anybody else. Amen. Because we're walking as a ministry with integrity. As an, in, as an individual with integrity. I'm telling y'all that, that God thinks integrity is something that is important. Amen. Don't get mad when I'm telling you what I, what I mean by that. You can't be saying that you are a Christian in, in this season and you had every Christmas party, you had every New Year's party, and you bottomed up and you turn it up. Right. And then gonna come and, and us read the Spirit of God. God said we need to make up our mind. Oh, Either we're going to be holy or we're not. And when I'm talking, I'm talking from here to here to here all the way out to the streets. Because there have been people who have been pouring into churches Sitting and holding titles and positions who have not been walking in integrity. This is not what I'm saying. I'm telling you what I know that God is speaking to us. But but you don't have you don't have to, the most of the time the people that, that make up a lot of noise are the ones that usually But if you know, if you know that I, that ain't me, oh, yeah. then you can keep on walking like, hey, I, I know that wasn't me that he was talking about. Oh, because God is looking for us in this last hour. We can, we can't keep making promises and then don't fulfill. Amen. Amen. Lord, I'll do what you want me to do, and then you won't do nothing He told you to do. All right. All right. <laughs> Lord, I'm going to be more intent on, on the things you asked me to do. And then you go even left more, even back further than you did when you said you were going to do what you said you were going to do. The, I think the scripture said we, we, need, we, we need not to be telling God what we're going to do and then don't do it. Amen. It was better for you not to say it. Amen. Because when you let it come out of your mouth, God is looking for you yes. to do it. Don't y'all ask when you ask God for something that, that he tell you he's going to do it. Don't you expect him to do yes, it? Amen. How are you going to ask God to do something you ain't going to do yourself? Amen. Bless me indeed. Hmm. And he said you won't even bless me with your mouth. Right. Oh, Joshua chapter 5 talking about transition. <laughs> Children of Israel for 400 years were entrapped in Egypt. Yes. They went there in a time where they needed to be in Egypt. Uh -huh. God began to increase them yes. to a level of a man that didn't know Joseph. Oh, yes. Didn't know nothing about his God. So he dealt with them in a way they shouldn't have been dealt with and imprisoned them. Yeah. It made them feel like that they were being dealt a favor. Mm -hmm. Isn't it amazing how sometimes we can be trapped in something and, and it made it feel like that 
It was our fault that we did. I made it feel comfortable to the point where I, we make excuses of why we did. Yeah. 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 And that's what was happening there. They, they were in Egypt. They were they were building they were building big buildings. They were taking care of the land, and and, and they they were there for four hundred years in slavery. Don't get, don't, don't, don't shake your head because some of us have been in slavery and in bondage to stuff. Where God said, "I want to bring you out," but you was happy, you were satisfied to stay there. But God said, "I need, I need to transition you out of some stuff that you, that you got comfortable in because comfort is not what God is looking for. Comfort is not what God wants us to have." But God wants us to be able to transition and move in the way that he wants us to move because every step he gives us, there's another breakthrough, there's another blessing, there's another open door. But if we get satisfied where we are, we'll never move to know that there's something better. Will you bump your neighbor and say, there is something better? There is something better. So for this 400 years, they get bonded. And they cry out to God. Isn't that a smart thing to do? Yeah. Anybody that's just been tired, sick and tired of being in the same place, yeah. but it only took them 400 years to start praying. Yeah. Isn't it amazing? It took them 400 years to figure out if they call on the Lord, He would come. I wonder how, many, how long we've been in some stuff that we tried to fix ourselves. And all we had to do was call on God and trust Him that He was going to be able to bring us through the But because the mindset is, is that I can fix it myself, that we'll leave God out of the equation. And that's why, that's why a lot of times we're frustrated, we're tired, we're mad with the world because we're trying to fix something that only God can fix. All I'm trying to do today is try to try to help you and pull you by the hand and tell you that God is saying transition. But the only way you'll transition, you gotta let go uh, of what you been, of what's been holding you, uh -huh. yeah. so that you can move freely when God is trying to take you through the water. Can I, try to, can I tell somebody that God is trying to take you through the Red Sea, but you keep talking about the mountains? Uh -huh. Lord have mercy. You keep talking about what, what's following behind you. But if you keep your eye on God, God is going to move some stuff out of the way and let you transition and walk through some stuff on dry ground. It was money for other folk, but God said, I'm going to let you get there and your feet ain't going to get dirty. He sends Moses in. And you would think that they would be happy that Moses showed up. See, sometimes when God is bringing deliverance, it don't always feel good. Amen. It don't always look good. But if you let it work, it will work for the good. So he let Moses go through there, and he told Pharaoh to let the people go, and he wouldn't let them go, so he sent plague after plague after plague to the point he got to the last plague. He tells me, he said, what I'm going to do is that firstborn of everybody that don't have the blood on the doorpost. Yes. But if you listen to me and you put the blood on the doorpost, I'm getting ready to transition you. I'm getting ready to shift you. I'm getting ready to move you to another place. But if you don't want to, you don't want to listen to what I'm trying to tell you to do, you're going to die in a place where you should have been able to move from. Yes. I wonder I'm just being nosy. You ain't got to answer. I wonder how many people have died in a place where you ain't got no place to die. Because you feel like you don't arrive somewhere where because you're living in a house you think you you ride in the car that you got and you got a little money in the bank and you every, everything is and you died in a place where God said, no, I want, I want to bring you out of that. I, I don't want you to get comfortable and you identify with the stuff you got. 
instead of identifying with the God that's on your side. Amen. All right. Any, anybody in here that, that have seen God move in your life in the last couple of days? And because, because he's been showing you that I want to bring I want to transition you, but you keep pulling back and, and trying to hold on to stuff that, that you've been trying to hold on to. And God said, how long was you going to be the He said, I'm showing you, I'm showing you that I'm able to transition you. I'm showing you that I'm able to bring you out of this thing, but you keep having the mindset that, that I deserve to be here. But God said, no, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to get you to the place that I promised. Because he promised the children of Israel a promised land. He brings them through the Red Sea. After the children of Israel died, uh, the ones that didn't put the blood over the doorpost, he said the firstborn died. And then, at a, at a fast time, he told him, he said, what, what I want you to do is that you're gonna, when you get finished, you're going to eat your lamb, and you're going to prepare your bread, but you ain't going to put no leaven in it. Because right. you're going to have time for it to rise. Right. Let, me, let me talk to somebody. I, I don't know who I'm talking to, but... But but you've been you've you been you've been waiting too long. You haven't been moving like God told you to move. And, and God said, "I'm trying to move you fast, but but you're waiting on the bread to rise." The children of Israel they didn't wait for the bread to rise. They ate it. Amen. Amen. And was ready to move. When they left Egypt, they didn't have a, they didn't have changes of clothes. They didn't have changes of shoes. All right. All they had was the silver and gold of Egypt. And the Lord said, "Because I'm with you, because I'm transitioning you, I'm, I ain't gonna let you stop where I." Amen. Right. Oh my God. Oh my God. But the first thing they do as He bring them through the Red Sea and they get to the other side and they see Pharaoh drown and all that. The first thing they do is murder. Yes. Complain. Yes. I know we ain't got no people in here to do that right now. <laughs> he done brought you through all of that and the next thing you do is because the next thing didn't work out, you start murdering. Start complaining. But God says, if I, if I brought you through this, what? I'm sure going to bring you through that. But they thought they were murmuring against Aaron and Moses, but God said, no, you ain't murmuring against them. You're murmuring against me because, because I called them. Can I tell you I'm on I'm on the human? I have feelings like everybody else. Amen. 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 Moses and Aaron had feelings too. Sometimes leadership go through some stuff. <laughs> and they have to take it with a smile. But the Bible said that, that the Lord told him, he said, now tell the children of Israel that I'm going to send grace. But before he sent the bread, he gave instructions. Uh, Why is it so hard for us to follow the instructions? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I wonder how many tests I failed because I didn't read the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> there was one test the teacher offered. The only thing she asked him to do was put our name on. Exactly. <laughs> I'm up there trying to figure out problems. <laughs> Because I didn't read the instructions. That's right. All right. All right. Everybody, I, I'm wondering why everybody else passes their tests up and they finish so fast. I'm still in this struggle. <laughs> I wonder how many times in your life that because you didn't follow instructions that everybody else is advancing and you still stuck, scratching your head trying to figure out why everybody not moving forward? Why is everybody getting ahead of us? It might not be the day that they are smarter than you. It might be the day. And follow. One of the best ways to 
transition is to follow the one that knows the plan. Okay. He told me, he said, now, everybody's going to go out and get an over worth of, of, of this stuff that's going to fall. He said, don't keep it till the next day. Because if you keep it in the house the next day, it's going to stink and it's going to send word going to show up. He said, if your house got a lot of folk, then you get a lot of it. He said, if your house got a little bit, you get a little bit. But you know how we are. <laughs> We're a little creepy. <laughs> I ain't supposed to get but I'm home, but I, I'm, I'm a little hungry. <laughs> and you get more than what he told you to. And the Bible said that he gave them all these instructions. And then the next morning, when the dew was raised up, there was a little, little, little bread that was laying on the ground. And all they had to do was go and take it and take what God told them to take. Uh, yeah. But the instruction where he said, on, on, the, on the day before the Sabbath, you get double the amount. So, yeah. so that you won't have to work on the Sabbath day. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. So when, it, when, when the dew fell and when it took up, the people went out and took it and brought it in. But the scripture said, and this is in Exodus 16. And the scripture said that what they done was that some of them kept it in the house yes. at the same time. Uh -huh. uh -huh. yes. And the words came. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the stench in the house came. Uh -huh. You didn't have to figure out who, who didn't follow the instruction. Uh -huh. All you had to do was follow the scent. Uh -huh. Can I tell you, you... You ain't, you ain't got you ain't got to worry about trying to figure out who is and who ain't. Amen. Just hang around long enough. Amen. You can follow the stench. Let me tell you how you can follow the stench. They are all, they always the ones that always got a problem with everything. Ain't nothing never good. Never, never, never nothing good. Never, never nothing positive. Never nothing good to say about anything or anybody. Right. Got the worst attitude that you can find. I ain't talking about that shot. I'm talking about some people I met. They, 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 it just stinks. But the only way to heaven. I know y'all don't know no church folk like that. Preacher preached too long. The choir sung too many songs. Uh, the drummer was playing too loud. The organist, I, they, he, he was off key in his song. And everything was wrong with everything. Lord, and I believe if Jesus would come, they would complain still. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'm, 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 I've got to go on because I'm transitioning. And so, so they, they complained that God sent the manna, and, and, and they looked at it, and they were trying to figure out what it is. And now the only thing it means is, what is this? God is doing some things that lead you to the point and say, Lord, what is this? Why is it that you're, you're sending this to us? And the reason why it was because they asked for it. Don't you know that God will bless you if you just ask? But as we go, and the Bible says that they ate this bread for 40 years. Wasn't well, supposed to be that long. But because they kept complaining, they kept being disobedient, that God allowed them to wander in the wilderness 40 years. Well, it only took 40, it just took four days to get where they were going. The Bible said it was so bad that he had to let all the people from 20 and, and older die out. Yes. Because, because it had gotten to the point where he was trying to transition them, and because they had a memory of Egypt, They wouldn't trust God to take them where he was trying to take them. They kept reverting back. Yes. Can I tell you, you can come out of Egypt, but Egypt still didn't do it. Yes. Go ahead. You'd have been delivered, but you keep having memories of what? And what I found out is that every time God takes you a step forward and you start going back, you go seven times worse than you did the first time that you were in that stuff. 
he said, what's the use to keep moving forward? But I want to tell you, it's worth it to move forward. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And you're going to have to trust God in this season. Trust him. Trust him. If you ain't never trusted nobody else before, you're going to have to trust God in this season of transition. Because you don't know where you're going, but God got the, got the GPS and he knows where he's taking us. I'm through, I'm through. I done lost the crowd, I'm through. But it's all good. For 40 years, he let them die out. And when you go to Joshua chapter 5, he said the first thing he done after he get them, get them to the place of almost getting them to the promised land, he had to recircumcise them. And all circumcision is is a cutting away. There's some stuff that we've been holding on to that God said, I'm trying to cut away from you. It's going to hurt for a while, but healing is going to come. I know, I know the men will understand, but, but God said, this, this circumcision that I'm talking about is from the heart. I'm cutting some things away. I'm cutting unforgiveness away. I'm cutting some hurt away. I'm cutting some things away that's been binding you, that's been holding you, that won't let you transition and love again and trust again because you got hurt the last time. But God said, I'm cutting it away from your heart because I'm trying to take the church forward. I'm trying to take you forward. And I tell you, the church is not going to go no further than every one of us. If we have to continue to wait on you to get rid of her forgiveness and to get rid of the trust issues. Because the Bible said that everybody they had to wait until all of them were whole before they moved. Can I ask this question? Y'all really don't get back? Could it be me that's holding up the transition of the whole life? Because I gotta have the last thing. Because it didn't go my way. And so the Bible, when you read it, Joshua chapter 5, or around seven, verse 7 and 8, said it circumcised them, and, 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 they, had, and, and they, was, they were sore for a while, and they had to wait until they got old. Am I right? Somewhere along in there. And when they got old, they didn't eat. Because they had just, they had just passed through the water, right? And now they're, they're, they're right on the cusp of moving into the promised land. Yes, all right. Yes, yes. And so God said, I'm getting ready to transition because I'm getting ready to cut off metal. All right. Yes. Right. Uh -huh. And now you get ready, you get ready to have your diet changed. All right. Ooh, I wish somebody would hear me. Y'all look at me kind of funny. But, but you've, been, you've been hungry for the same things over and over again. Anybody here that ever had a problem with trying something new? Yes. Until you tasted it? Uh -huh. yeah. And you were like, God, I wish I would have been trying this a long time ago. Uh -huh. yes, yeah. I don't eat that. Uh -huh. Until all of a sudden somebody thinks you like, like, like you like you like it, and you taste it, you're like, yeah, I eat that a whole lot. And then all of a sudden you think you turn them on to it because now you got to share more. Yeah. Anybody? Yes. <laughs> Anybody want to talk to me? <laughs> they were so satisfied. They've been eating manna for 40 years, and now all of a sudden, here comes some corn. Uh -huh. They ain't had corn since they left Egypt. Right. And now God has transitioned to a point where they get ready to eat of the, of the good of the land. Yeah. And their appetite is messed up. Because they still looking for men. Uh -huh. 
And God said, ain't no more better coming. I wonder how many people are starving to death because you're still waiting on something that you used to have. All right. And God said, I'm bringing you to a place where you can have, you can go get what you need. Yeah, that's right. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm done. Close it here. They eat the corn. They have the Passover because this is going to be this is going to be the Passover of Passover because they haven't honored the Passover since they left Egypt. All right. Now they're coming back to remember what God had done for them. Uh -huh. Now, now they now now they had a, a circumcision where they cut the waist and stuff because God is getting ready to take them to a problem, and they get the taste of the land that he was getting ready to carry him into. If you ever get a taste of freedom, <laughs> bondage don't feel the same. Somebody need to hear me here. You trying to keep going back to the same old well. And God done showed you that there, there's a there's better, there's better, uh, a better well over here, but you keep trying to go back and, and the well is shut down and you mad because the well is shut down. God said I'm trying to transition because I got better water over here. Shadow God got better. Yes, For us. And, and the only thing he's looking for us to do is, 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 is to be willing to transition. Can I tell y'all what I, what, what I wrote down? Is that God will never bring you out of something that he don't have provision for the next. Right. He, will never, he will never get you out of one thing and not provide in the next season. Can I, I need to say this and I'm going to be done. Don't block your next season because you have enjoyed what used to be. And the reason why, why, why you don't want to move forward and transition is because you don't close your heart and your mind. But I'm praying today that God will, will, open, will open you up to the point of saying, Lord, I can be free from this. I, I, I can get my joy back. I can dream again. I, I can let my guard down around the right folk. Don't let me let it down around the wrong folk, but let me get let me In this transition. And the Bible said that when the, when the matter ceased, God had a fruitful land. And they ate the fruit that year. Anybody know that God wanted to bring you to a land where you can live in houses that you didn't build. Do you know that God want to bring you to a place where other people done slaved and work and you just going to step in because he favors you? But there's another transition is that we got to give our heart back to God. We got to definitely dedicate our lives back to God and say, God, I have fallen from some places. I let my I let myself get away, but I'm coming back to you because because y'all do know that Jesus is the true bread, yeah. <laughs> and because He is the true bread, that we get, we don't have to hunger no more, we don't have to thirst no more because because he, if He's the true bread, then we got Jesus. Yeah. We can transition out of being broke, busted, and special, and we can come in the house with our hands lifted up and our mouth filled with praise. God has already fought the battle. 
and the victory already won. Because they took the bread. And they broke it. But the only thing they did when they broke it was they blessed it. As he's hanging up there, Lord, he, he look at the bread blessing us. Father, don't hold it to their charge. Because this is why I came. To set the captains free. And anybody here that really want to be free because, because you understand that God is transitioning I don't want church just to be church. I want it to be a place of healing. I want it to be when you come in here that the whole week that the things that have been going on, when you when you step on the ground, that there begin to be some joy that will that will begin to rebubble up and, and when you be on the choir wanting to sing, that all of a sudden that, that ain't no you crying and ain't nobody bothering you. You got clapping in your hands again. God is transitioning you and me. But we got to walk in integrity. We got to trust God for the results. But we got to be open enough to move like God tells us to move. If there's anybody in this building, let you know that this message was sent for you. I want, to, I want to invite you that we can pray together. I'm not, I know, I know everybody already in here is saved. I'm not, but if by chance we'll sweep the corners, and if there's anybody here that's not saved today, you can come to, we're looking for you. But I, I'm talking to those of you who, who know that you done gave your heart to God, but, but it's been kind of hard on the transition, learning how to trust Learning how to forgive. Learning how to let go of the struggles and the habits. Learning how to, to let go of my feelings. Letting go of regrets. There, there, there's somebody that needs to be delivered from regret. Yeah, you've done it. You stayed there a little too long. But thank God you ain't still there. But the regret of how long you took. God said, I'm, I'm going to heal that today. Maybe, maybe you, don't, you don't have anything that you, that you have that you need to pray for. But, but would you come and stand in agreement with those that did come and, and say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I just want to stand in agreement because I know that, that if he did for me, He'll do it for you. I read this. I read this post on Facebook. It said that if, if you owe me anything, you done me wrong. I'm not talking that in. I'm not carrying that in with me because I'm transitioning. I ain't even mad about it. Because the only thing it done was make me stronger, make me, make me understand some things. Helping me to know that I can put my trust in God when I can't trust nobody else. this one more time. There will be major transitions in your life and in the, in the life of this ministry this whole year. For this ministry, you will see it in the, as a transition in the next three months. I don't know exactly what it is, but, but I'm going to tell you, it's going to happen, and we're going to know it. We're going to 
break down. We're going to break down. Don't worry about my prayer. You pray, you pray while I pray. We're we going to pray together. Don't worry about my prayer.
Help us to transition, God. God, we haven't done our best yet. But we know that, Lord God, with you on our side, we can do better. Transition our deacon, God, so, so that he might be able to hear your voice even clearer and move by your command. Each one of the musicians, God, I pray that you would shift and that you would transition, God, that, that we will be able to play according to your will, that we'll catch the chords of heaven and we release them on earth. Everybody that's on the praise team, God, help us, Lord God, to first of all give our heart to you, then we can give our song to you. Even our ushers, God, as they stand at the door, Lord God, help them to transition because they will meet with some people sometimes that are not kind and not nice, but God, help them to be able to stay. And every member of this church, God, Help us to prefer one another in love. Help us to pray one for another. And Lord, if we know something on somebody, help us not to use it as a, as a stronghold, but Lord God, help us to pray for one another. That we don't pray on each other, but we pray for each other. And we thank you for it. If by chance there's somebody under the sound of my voice, God, that don't know you in the part of this sin, save today. Anybody that's backslidden, God, bring them home today. And anybody that's struggling with, the, with their identity, God, we know that you can change. Anybody that's ready to give up and quit, encourage them to hold on. And I want to thank you for the testimony of a specific day, the, the, the right prayer that was prayed and the answers that came. And I know if you did it for Sister Shepherd, you would do it for anybody else, God. Help us to have faith to believe. As I close, I declare increase. I declare the head and not the tail. I declare above and never beneath, the lender and not the borrower, and the peace of God will rest upon you. That even your dreams and, and your visions will come to pass as we transition in Jesus' name. If you believe it, will you say amen? If you don't mind, if you can encourage somebody before you go back to your seat. And just let them know we transition. We're going to make this thing together. It is already done. Watch God change things.
come back at 10.30 this evening as we usher out 23 and we usher in 24. And I do want to ask one other thing of you. That on next Sunday, next Sunday right after church, we will uh, work on our calendar of the year. And so I want to ask everybody to come back and be with us so that we can mark our calendar for the year so we can have everything planned so we won't catch us off guard. We'll know what we're doing, how it's going to be done, so that we won't, we won't throw something together. We'll have it planned with purpose and do it with integrity and with, with a purpose. We don't want to just have a program, but we want to have purpose behind what we're doing. Amen. I believe that we. I don't think there is any announcements in the. So I just made the announcement. Thank you, uh, Sister Ferguson. I didn't want to take her job, but that's all we wanted. We wanted to come back this evening, ten thirty. We're looking for a mighty word from each one of these ministers. If all hearts and minds are clear. We're asking you to stand. Father, as we leave this place, but never from your presence, I pray, God, that we don't block what you're trying to do in our lives by focusing on the wrong thing. Keep us with our intent to be open to your voice and then help us to follow instruction. Sometimes you will tell us to be still. Help us not to be busy when you tell us to be still. And help us not to be idle when you tell us to work. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. We pray for divine healing. Over every person that's hurting in any way, whether it's in their physical body, their mind, or in their heart. We pray for our loved ones that's not saved, God. That you would touch them now. And just the way you changed our heart, that you would change them also. Help us, God, that we will be what you would have us to be. Now, as we leave this place, we ask that you would go with us. You would stand by us. Now, may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, will rest in the mind of us now and forever. And we will sing the choir as we close. Now, but thank God, happy.